A couple of years ago, I didn't even know what a data structure was. I started totally from scratch. I don't have a computer science degree. And I went onto YouTube and I just found all the material to be just really dry and just not accessible to me. Okay, so this video is gonna be a brain dump of everything I know about data structures. And I'm gonna teach you them in a simple, informal way. I'm gonna go through every data structure and explain them in a way that anyone can understand. Because they look really intimidating from the outside, but they actually aren't that bad. And if you just take it step by step, learn the patterns and the basics and add on the complexity as you go, you will learn it, trust me. So maybe you're a computer science student struggling with it or you work in tech now and just want to level up. All you really need is consistency, persistence, and this idea that rather than practice makes perfect, practice makes good. And if you're new here, I'm Andrew. I got into tech in my 30s and became a software engineer and digital nomad. I make content around tech and me traveling the world making apps basically. So if that sounds your kind of vibe, Describe if you like. All right, a few questions you may have. Number one, what kind of mindset should you have when you're learning data structures? I just say, keep it light, have fun with it. It's not that deep. If you treat it like a dry thing, it will become a dry thing. So treat it like puzzles and just have fun. Keep it light. That's what I did. Next question, the math. People obsess over the math. This is not an excuse to learn this stuff. If you know high school math, then you'll be fine. You might have to learn some other stuff like logarithms, for example, but if you can code, you can learn the math behind data structures and algorithms, but it's not a lot. So forget about it and just learn what you need to when you need to. All right, next, which language should you use to learn data structures? This is a really good question. The answer is whichever language you're good at. Don't make it harder on yourself by learning a new language. Um, a lot of the resources are geared towards JavaScript, Python, and Java. I'd say Python's probably the easiest because it's really English-like, but it doesn't really matter. And a lot of the concepts and resources are language agnostic as well, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, day one of data structures, or step one, you get a high-level overview of all the different concepts and all the different data structures. Go onto your favorite LLM of choice, and type in, give me an overview of all the different data structures. And you wanna learn concepts like recursion, pointers, and the next one I'll talk about is big O, because these will just keep popping up again and again. So learn all the curriculum, so at a high level, learn all the different data structures and those concepts I mentioned, and then you're done. Okay, and where do you go for this? Were well, you watching this video, that's a good start, but also just YouTube. There's loads of really good ones. There's a really good free CoCamp one, which is really visual, and it's a nice introduction into binary search, which is gonna be really important for us. And also some other ones I'll reference. But yeah, learn all the top level concepts and just drill them into your brain. Don't go too deep, learn them at a high level at this stage. We're gonna look at a concept which is gonna become your friend, and it is big O. You can't go any further without understanding what this means. And when you hear words like time and space complexity and you see this thing, you know what's going on. And a good way to think about big O is this sentence. Just drill this in your brain and you'll get it. How code slows as data grows. So for example, like if there's an earthquake, we measure it with the Richter scale. With code and with data structures, you measure how good a data structure is at certain things like adding or removing by using big O. So once you learn this stuff, you'll be able to look at a line of code and measure each line, the time and space complexity of it. Now those words sound really big, but it's not actually that hard. Okay, you may be asking, what is a data structure? And to start off with, let's use the analogy of a stock price. If you just have one stock price on one date, that's pretty meaningless data, right? But if you put it with a bunch of them and then you can analyze how the stock is performing over time, then it becomes meaningful data and you can actually look for patterns in that data. And how you contain and what data structure you use for that data is really important in computer science. So a data structure is just a container for data. And like in the real world, we have stuff. So I have this, I have this coffee thing, and I can store this in a fridge or I can store it in a backpack. Both of these have strengths and weaknesses. For example, a fridge is massive, right? But it keeps things cold and it's also really organized. So you can just go in a fridge and just find out what you want really quickly. Or you have a backpack. A backpack's really portable. You can just chuck a lot of stuff in there, take it wherever you want, but it's not so organized. These data structures using a fridge and a backpack metaphor are the same thing. They have different purposes for each one. And it's the same with data structures. The reason there's loads of data structures is because there's no perfect one and they all have different strengths and weaknesses dependent on what you want to do. And the key thing I'm teaching you in this video that we're gonna to learn today is that as a computer science student or as a programmer, you're given some data and you're told what we need to do with the data. You can look at it and say, okay, we're gonna use this data structure and you understand the strengths and weaknesses of each one. 
This is what we're learning today. All right, and I'm gonna level with you here. This stuff doesn't actually matter on the job. If you're a programmer, particularly if you're working in front end, with back end, you know, you'll use some different data structures. But the reason it's important is if you wanna interview for one of these big tech companies, if you, you're studying computer science and you've got no choice, or if you're working for a company in data. So if you work with massive data sets, knowing which data structure to use is important, but mostly it's for interviews and computer science degrees. Okay, and after all that talking, the first data structure you need to know is an array, or in Python it's called a list. And this is like the foundational baseline data structure. If you've done any programming course, you'll come across an array. And a key concept to know straight away, this might trip you up a bit, is if you're completely new to programming and computer science, is that we count from zero and not one in the real world. The reason we do this is because it matches how memory works in computers. And the key things to remember with arrays is that they're a collection of items stored in a fixed order. So items are stored next to each other in memory and you access them via the index, like a row of boxes, basically. These are really good if you wanna look up something by position because it's really fast. The downsides are they're, enough, they're a fixed size in some languages and inserting and deleting is pretty slow. And a good example in the real world use case is a list of student names in a classroom. So you have like Alice, Bob, and Charlie. For example, if I wanna access the data in zero, it's really easy. So I go in there, I say zero, I get Alice back. Where we run into issues with arrays, it's where you wanna remove or insert items in the middle. The reason being, you have to re-index everything. And data structure number two is a linked list. And as I'm going through this list of data structures, they're gonna get more and more complex, but do not overthink linked lists. They're actually really simple. The only issue is that if you come from being a programmer, you have this idea of arrays and indexes, you don't have that in linked lists. And all they are at the most simple level is just a node, which is a piece of data and a pointer to the next node. That's it basically. So these are a chain of nodes where each node points to the next. So the first node is the head and the last node with no next is the tail. The slow to access items via an index and it uses more memory as well because of pointers. So they're really good for inserting and removing items really quick. And there's two types. There's a singly linked list, which is one direction, and a doubly linked list, which is both directions. And a good real world example of a linked list is imagine a massive train and it's got 20 different carriages, but it only has one entrance. So to get on, you have to get on a carriage one. And each carriage is its own node and it's connected to the next one. So if you want to get to carriage six, you've got to start at one and go through every single carriage to get to six. Same thing with a linked list, basically. And one thing I noticed when I was learning data structures and algorithms was I found a lot of the YouTubers, they just like breadcrumb you. So they don't give you all the information, but they just like point you to their mentorship program or some product. Here, I'm trying to put everything on the table for you, but I wanted a way to write down more of my personal experience and make an extended version of this video, like a written resource. So I made one, I'll link it below. It's called How to Not Suck at Data Structure and Algorithms and Leak Code. So I put a lot of time into it, and it's more like my personal experience learning it, specific issues I had, things like the maths, all that kind of stuff. So if you wanna check that out, it's had really good reviews. I'll link it below and you can get it if you want. Okay, data structure number three is a stack. And the easiest way to think about this is a stack of plates. So you only really touch the top one, last in, first out. And common operations would be to push, so that's to add, pop, that's remove, and it's used in undo features, browser history function calls. So a good example is you're on the browser, you go to Google and then you wanna go back. So you have the browser back button history and that'll let you do that. The pros of it, it's simple to implement and easy to use. It's really good for managing recent history. Cons or you can only access the top element, obviously, and it's not really ideal when, when you need random access to. Okay, data structure number four is a queue. Very similar to stacks, but just imagine people queuing up for a coffee shop, for example. First in, first out. So key points, as I said earlier, first in, first out. Just imagine an actual queue. Common operations are to enqueue, that's to add. Dequeue, that's to remove. And it's used in scheduling, printers, and messaging systems. And pros of it, it's really great for processing things in order. So it's useful in real-time systems and task scheduling. The cons of it is that you can't just jump into the middle. You only use it for front and back access. And also for like lower level languages, it can be tricky managing size and memory. Data structure number five is a tree. And we talked earlier that 
Different data structures have different purposes. So for arrays and linked lists, it's just a straight line. With a tree, you need that hierarchy. For example, like a family tree or a folder system on your computer. And a tree has a top node called the root, and that will branch out from there. So as I mentioned, instead of a straight line, a tree will branch out and one thing can lead to many other things. And the reason these are important is behind the scenes in computer science, they're actually used for a lot of things like file systems with folders and files, also complete suggestions, databases, which do indexes, and also in like things like React and Frontend with the HTML DOM structure, that is a tree. So each node has a value and that links to child nodes and there's a binary tree. So each node is up to two children. This is really good for searching and sorting. And a classic example is like your desktop on your Mac or your Windows. You have folders on there and inside that you have files. So that structure It's really good for fast lookups as well if it's balanced. The cons of it is that it can get complex to implement and also it can be unbalanced. So unbalanced trees can lead to like poor performance basically. Number six is a binary search tree. And this is just a special kind of tree, but it seems one of those nightmare questions where you'll go for an interview with Meta, you'll get a whiteboard and you'll have to implement one of these from scratch. And a binary search tree is seen as a smarter kind of tree because it keeps things in order, like a very organized filing cabinet. So each item or a node will follow this rule. So if it's smaller, it goes to the left. If it's bigger, it goes to the right. So if you're looking for something, you can cut your search in half each time. And the classic example is a phone book. Okay, an example of this is let's say it's the 1990s, smartphones don't exist, and you've got a friend called William, and you need to find his name in a phone book. All right, you need to get his number. So what you could do is, the inefficient way of doing this would be to start at A, look at every single name in A, then go to B, then C, then E, etc. With this, what you could do is open the phone book halfway. You get to M, then you open it half again, you get to T, you open it half again, you get to W. So it's a more efficient way of searching rather than going from A to B to C to D. So binary search tree is really good for searching, inserting and deleting, and it keeps data sorted, but it can become unbalanced and slow without extra logic. And they're a bit harder to maintain than arrays or linked lists. Next, data structure number seven is a graph. So a graph is just a bunch of dots called nodes connected by lines called edges. That is it. It's all about connections between things. So like arrays and trees are about order, graphs aren't. They're about relationships. So who's connected to who? How far is A from B? And can you get here from there? And a real world scenario you can think of with graphs is just look at Facebook or Google Maps. These rely heavily on graphs. For example, in Facebook, each person is a node and each friendship is a line that connects them. Or you got Google Maps. Each location is a node and roads between them, those are edges. And you got two types of graphs. You got undirected, so connections go both ways like mutual friendships or you got directed. So connections go one way, like a follow on X to Elon Musk or whatever, or a one way street. And the reason graphs matter is that once you're aware of them, they're everywhere. So social networks, GPS, even like recommendation systems. If something connects to something else, it can be modeled as a graph. The pros of using a graph is that it's super flexible. So you can model almost any real world system with them. And they're really good for finding the shortest path for example, on Google Maps, if you wanna to get to a destination and what's the shortest way you can get there. The cons of them are, I think, one of the trickiest to learn. You know, you've got linked lists in the race, which are quite straightforward. It can be difficult to visualize these complex graphs. So if you're a beginner, take it step by step, but they can be a little bit overwhelming at the start. And the last one, data structure number eight, is the hash table or hash map. And if you know any coding, you've done any programming, these will be really intuitive already because it's basically just an object in JavaScript or a dictionary in Python. So a hash table is basically just a very quick dictionary. So you give it a key and it instantly gives you back the value. So you don't have to search, you don't have to scroll. So if I look up a word in a dictionary, I immediately get the definition. Or in programming, if it's a database, if I look up a username, I get their email or their profile. And as a real world example, imagine you've got some users in a database. So you're storing their usernames and their email addresses. 
You don't have to search anything. All you have to do is ask for the username and the system will give you the result straight away. And how it works really simply is it uses a hash function. And this will turn the key into a number, like a locker number. And that number will point to the spot where the data is stored. So think of it like a huge filing cabinet. So you, rather than going through all these files, you can just instantly jump to the right file straight away. All right, and what's the pros of using the hash table? They're just really quick for like look up, insert and delete. They're really good if you want to find something by a key. So this is perfect for like databases, for example. The cons of it, it, they can have something called collisions, which is when two keys end up at the same spot and also they're not sorted as well. So you don't get the benefits of the sorting. So some of the data structures I've mentioned aren't used a lot in real world programming. Hash tables are, and they're like cheat codes for finding stuff super quick. So you can give something a label, a key, and it will just jump straight to the answer. If you want to learn data structures and algorithms, you can learn it for free on Online, mostly off YouTube but for like the best resources and for a full curriculum where they actually invest in it the paid ones are usually the best but I did three courses all right so I started with CS50 this is the best free programming course in the world I think I also did a Udemy course by Colt Steel which was really good but the best one I found the one where it kind of clicked was one from zero to mastery I'll link it down below in the description. He just used these really good real world analogies, which just made sense to me. So that's the only course I've done where data structure and algorithms kind of click. And he'll just go through every data structure in order. So yeah, check that out if you want. So yeah, as I mentioned, data structure and algorithms, they just look so intimidating from the outside. But if you take it step by step, just go through these resources I mentioned. Remember, practice makes good, not perfect. Don't be so hard on yourself and just try and find fun in it. You know, treat it like a puzzle and write out a lot of these data structures as well. So I would get to a point where I wrote so many linked lists that when I got to an interview, I just understood them intuitively. Okay, and if you got this far, like and comment for God's sake. I read and respond to every comment and I really appreciate it. Tell me what your journey is, why you learn this stuff. I'm interested to hear this. And I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding. Ciao, bye bye.